going on guys and girls it's the short bear and today i thought we'd go over this week's trades so from monday the 16th of december until the following friday and i'm going to kind of walk you through it exactly what i saw why i took my entries where i did and um, just in general explain to you the process that i had during um during that time so first of all this week was um was weaker than the other weeks uh, meaning the stocks didn't really pop as much um, at the open, they didn't really run as much um, for you that might be trading for a longer while or at least a few months. Um, if you remember uh, two months ago, for example, right, um, we had a lot of movement. So the stocks open, they ran, you know, 30, 40, 50 percent um, before reversing. And we're getting back into a market where um, there is a lot of unloading, basically. So a lot of selling, a lot of dilution. Uh, and, and a lot of fades. So I really wanted, you know, to to hit it because, as you might know, um, you know, as my name uh, tells it, the short bear. Uh, I really like shorting, and I like taking the big moves. All right, so the all day faders that start really on un unwinding the whole day, basically. So I, as I knew we are entering um, that kind of market, I really wanted, you know, to hit it because I really need to capitalize before the market. Uh, might shift again into you know a even slower market where things don't really even gap up in the morning. So my thought process was, let's find the dilution tickers. Let's really you know um, wake up early in the morning and you know hit them right away um, when when I see the opportunity. Basically, so the, the whole week started with um, RGLS. RGLS is a pretty known ticker um, that I've traded in the past. Right, if you look at the daily chart, you're gonna see. What they usually do is basically they they run it. It starts really you know getting basically hammered. They do a reverse stock split and so on and so on. So it really never traded at three hundred dollars, and we bag new longs every single time we do a reverse stock split. Every single time we really dump, and it's basically the same thing over and over again. So every time it pops, you know that a lot of bag holders will be holding it long. And they will be looking to unload, and also they had um, fresh new warrants, I believe, if I remember correctly. So dilution as well. So as soon as I saw it, I went to the daily chart, and what I saw was um, basically this kind of gap, right, where it's like it gapped down from the previous range, the bottom range being at around one dollar plus minus, you know, five cent, and we gapped down. Uh, at first, and then traded in that new range in between fifty cent and one dollar. So I knew, all right, one dollar is going to be a key level. If the stock makes it back under that whole number, basically, it's going to have a hard time to prove itself to kind of ramp up, just because the market is weak, and at the same time, you know, with the fading pre-market, uh, a lot of people, you know, will be inclined not to long this one. So as soon as I saw it pop towards 130, uh, which is basically, you know, kind of um, the gap fill area as we pop over it. Um, so because we, we started, you know, having difficulties to move over the 125 area, which is the gap fill area right in here or near gap fill. And um, I signed pop weak volume right away, you know, not a lot of volume. And we tried making it over 40 and the seller came in right away. He was hidden. All right. So I saw a lot of selling, a lot of selling. And as soon as we, you know, moved back down, I was like, all right, we rejected that level twice now. We are in a weak market. I'm expecting a fade. I like the sticker. I've traded it in the past. So I hammered it right away as much as I could. Uh, got basically to full size right away uh, into that volume. I didn't want to, you know, trade uh, multiple thousand shares. So nothing like, um, you know, five figures. I just wanted, you know, an easy trade to start off the week. That's what we got. Wanted to add in here, but it broke down just as I entered more and, you know, fading from there. Uh, no pops. Every single pop is being sold into, you know, lower highs, lower highs. And 
we, we reach that area basically of resistance. So we move back on the $1 as the market open. Weakness continues down load and I basically cover near 80 cent, you know, for a 50 cent win on, um, on basically, you know, $1 stock. So um, really, really nice trade to, to start off the week. Um, the next ticker was CI, same thing also on Monday. Um, CI is a, is a really known name. This was for me, and I said it in the past, the best uh, short swing opportunity that we got this year. So kind of the same thing where, you know, they keep on, um, on diluting. So if you look at the daily chart, I mean, just look at the prices, right? 8 million, <laughs> never traded at 8 million, right? So they do reverse stock split every single time and they start diluting again and again and again. It's a real dilution house. So every time it pops, as you can see, selling, pops, selling, pops, selling, pops, selling, pops, and sells off, basically. Um, they change a few things in the filings, all right, which makes the dilution less than usual. But still, we've got so many bag holders, you know, so much selling that uh, every time we're going to pop up, usually we're going to see a move down right away. And uh, as you can see, we kind of found a low uh, at 60 cents since, you know, the, the filings changed a bit. But I'm expecting uh, a kind of rollover action soon. Um, so on... Um, it's here, uh, where was it, Tuesday, Monday, All right, so we had an initial run um, towards $3 a week back, um, I remember that, and um, as soon as it popped up on Monday, I was like, all right, which are, um, what are the, the, the kind of resistance areas I want to hit, and uh, right away I saw, right, 230s, that's where we struggled, and as at uh, 250, which was you know the mo the, the the area we broke down from uh, on, um, on on that specific day. So as soon as we popped up, uh, I was watching it pre-market, and as you can see, um, we had some resistance all right uh, near 220. We tried popping over it, so 225-ish couldn't make it, couldn't hold it. So I know right, it's it's already weak. It can't even break out. It can't open up. Uh, it's a dilution ticker, and you know this time pre-market we got less volume than last time we gapped up. So on this day here, and we're basically opening into the resistance areas from the last week. So I was like, let me just look at the open. I want to see how it reacts first because I want to know. All right, will we stop at 225, or maybe we'll move uh, more, you know, towards 250 for potential shorts. So. As soon as we popped, selling right away, I didn't want to chase into the first pop. I wanted to see how it develops, you know. I'd rather be not in here and in from a bit lower or not in at all um, than, you know, being too soon. So as it popped up towards the resistance area, I started in, trimmed a bit and added back to full size. And from there, basically a pretty easy game. And you're right, we're making it back basically into the previous range, which is in here we are rejecting the previous resistance area. So the next area of interest for me to cover is gonna be basically the, oops, the support area, which is gonna be right around 180s, 190s, right? Uh, and we never really made it there. Um, I held for the whole day. Uh, we broke down in the end towards 190, but as we tested 190 here, it kind of supported and supported again. I was like, all right, this is not the action I want. I want to basically panic, I want straight, a straight flush like on this day, basically, right? Uh, we didn't get that, I kind of supported the whole way down, so I decided, you know what, let me cover this, I don't want to be involved anymore, and that's what I did. SLDB, um, super, super nice sticker on this one, a super nice trade, uh, one of the biggest um, this week. All right, so first of all, daily chart as always. Uh, I'm seeing, you know, kind of a chart where we get a gap down and then we start running again. And from there, basically, we're moving the whole way down. So a lot of back holders on the long side as well. Um, but we've got a gap towards $11. So I want to be kind of careful. Right? Um, but the next step I, I took was looking at the filings. And what I saw was, all right, they've got an ATM actually, right? So ATM play, super nice. Uh, they need the cash. And from there was pretty... Pretty certain, pretty sure what I wanted to do. I wanted to wait for some weakness for a parabolic, for double top, whatever, right? And first of all, we started popping um, towards that $6 mark. Uh, couldn't make it the first time, got back down, but I didn't want to trade something that 
was so volatile and the spread was pretty big in this area as the volume was pretty light. Um, and I, I just waited. After that, we kind of reclaimed right away, uh, came back down into the support area towards 550, supported again. Uh, I was looking right in here, the volume was a bit bigger. I was like, all right, let me see if weakness comes in, if sellers come in. But what they did is basically, they started buying all the offers, right? So the bid was there, it absorbed, 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 and pushed back up, pushed back up, and kind of absorbed again the whole way. Uh, so I didn't want to get short into that. Broke out, was watching this area as well for stuff. As I said, double top uh, would be an option for me to enter, but right as we rejected, we just you know sprung back up. So we kind of moved down like a spring and then boom, moved up and then we got parabolic, right? And I wanted a whole number to get in. And what I saw was this you know seven dollar uh, mark right here. And I wanted to see what I don't want to do and what a lot of people do is they short risking a whole number, right? But usually what we're gonna do is we're gonna break over that resistance just because people get emotional. They're like, oh, this level is gonna break. It's gonna to go to 10, right? And we bro break over all the shorts, you know, blow out, they, they get out and sellers step in and now everyone's on the same side, right? So shorts are covering, longs are getting in and chasing and then it sort of reverses basically. So that's what I was looking for. And um, right as we kind of move towards $7, 730, I saw a seller step in. So whereas on the way up, buyers were absorbing and the offers were, you know, bought up. Uh, over seven, it looked completely different where we tried pushing up, but the offers were absorbing and the bids got taken out. So complete opposite. And I knew, all right, they've got an ATM, they need the cash. So this might be it. So I got in, uh, good size, uh, first entry there because I was expecting a pullback no matter what, right? So I'm expecting a pullback. I've got that, and if it is as heavy as I think it is, I'm gonna be adding. So that's what we got. We gotta move back under seven. Um, no, you know, kind of springy action. I'm just selling into every pop. We pop back over seven quickly. I entered right away as I saw the seller step in again, and from there, easy hold, basically ATM. Um, super weak into the open, and they start selling even more. Gets the red, uh, so green line red, gap fill area. And as we, you know, kind of support here, I'm seeing still a seller, I'm waiting, 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 and then we break under it, panics, flows in, um, nice volume as well. So I cover a piece, and then I'm thinking, all right, let's see how far we can make it. And we got so overextended to the downside that I covered everything into this area right here, uh, into the $4 area, right? So nice uh, near $3 trade there, and then uh, as we started absorbing on the bids here, I got in long a bit, not not nearly the size that I had on the short side. As you know, I'm I'm more comfortable on the, on the short side. And as you know, we broke down right there. I was like, all right, it's too overextended to get back in short, and the long is not working. So let me just cut it, cut it right away, and just never touched it from there uh, for basically the whole day. Next one, uh, M I R M. Uh, this one, really really nice ticker. Uh, let me show you. All right, um, new IPO stock uh, pops up, huge volume over $10, breaks basically over the, the all time highs at $16, um, starts really, you know, ramping up um, all the way to 20 on, uh, on Monday. I traded it on that day as well on Monday. Um, green trade, but nothing, you know, particular about that trade. Um, a bit of a, of a hard trade, but still green. Uh, as we moved, up towards $20, right? So as the move continued, um, what I was looking for basically is um, overextension, right? So we've got the first break over, you know, all time highs, over 22, uh, we get over it, no problem, pullbacks, kind of find new support, then we get parabolic towards 26, right? And I'm looking for the midday action for kind of 12 to 1 p.m. Um, for a trade, and um, and as we put in this, you know, double top action, um, I'm looking at it, right? So um, started in uh, long at first because what I thought we might do is kind of push towards the $30 um, dollar mark. So the whole number basically picture it as this is a $1 stock, for example, right? $1, we move towards $2, find some resistance there. And the next area is going to be, you know, $3, so $1 uh, higher. And this is the same thing, $10, $20, $30. 
that's kind of what I'm looking at. And as we pop over 25, no problem. I thought this would be the next logical step. Uh, but I wasn't looking for a 30 mark. What I was looking for is everyone anticipating that $30 test and actually, you know, stuffing into the 28 area, which we saw the next day after that. So um, as I thought we might get parabolic towards 28 and I'm working on my lungs, I thought, all right, let's use it. We're still absorbing, right? So we move down, spring, we move down, spring, we move down, spring, right? Kind of that action um, looking a lot like absorbing, a lot like here, a lot like, you know, here, a lot like here. So I'm thinking, all right, next, move up, right? But as we broke out, no real volume came in, you know, kind of an anomaly, you know, volume divergence compared to the previous breakouts. And as we move down towards, you know, my average, I just cut the long. I was like, all right, this is it, right? We're seeing a double top. We're seeing volume divergence. We're seeing, uh, you know, kind of parabolic action. We're seeing longs chasing. Uh, so let me get in. So I got in short. Uh, and as we broke down the support uh, and popped, I added more size. Uh, my stop being, you know, kind of my entry area right here near break even. Uh, and basically, you know, risking the, the size that I added here. As we move down, I wasn't looking for any covers. I was looking for basically the support area right in here. And as we move down and kind of accelerated to the downside, as selling volume came in, I covered it all because still, you know, this should have unloaded more, right? So we start moving down, we pop back, we don't really fade down right away. We move down another leg, we reclaim all the way. We move down and we bounce more, right? So I was expecting the same action and we're as we're getting into the last hour, I'm thinking, all right, shorts will be covering, along with my, you know, dip buying for the next move up and that's why I covered over there. Um, ASLM, a nice opportunity on this one. Uh, I wanted to get long on this one for the first entry, um, just based on, you know, kind of the previous history. Every time we start, you know, gapping up, we start running and, um, and here we, we were running uh, the market as well. And, um, you know, that's, oops, I mean, my bad. Um, but same thing, right? So we start gapping up, we move up, we move up, we move up every single time. Um, but now what happens is basically, you know, we, we've got a lot of, um, of selling pressure because bag holders are in it for now. Um, so as I was watching it, uh, I thought, let me look for a long opportunity uh, and, and that was based on a few things, right? So usually for the faders, uh, the 7 a.m. faders, we start, you know, being heavy right away. So we try popping at 7 a.m. and then we start fading and heavy and heavy and heavy. But on this one, we were absorbing on the bid, right? We were just a lot of absorbing. So I started in actually short, uh, popped back up, you know, absorbing into this area right here. And right away, I was like, all right, this is not the action I want. This one can run. We proved it in the past. So let me look for, uh, for the long trade, right? So started accumulating on the long side, it started working, you know, pop over 290, and then as we just, you know, behaved really heavy uh, right into the 290 area, I started, you know, looking for an exit. So as we broke down the support, I was like, all right, this is not working out, uh, let me let me cover it. So I covered in here, uh, no, I added, actually, I added that to support as, you know, we formed kind of a range, I thought, all right, move up, let me add some more, and if we fail, I'm just gonna sell. And as we continued moving down and behaving heavy, um, there was a big bidder right in here. I just hit the bidder and, uh, and got out completely, basically. And from there, I was like, all right, this proved to me that it can't move up. So I'm going to be looking for a short side trade. Uh, we had a bit of dilution. And at the same time, we had the, the previous runs you know, with a lot of bag holders in it. So I was watching for a pop. Didn't want to get in right away at the open. And as we popped up right into basically the breakout area that failed before, I was watching it and I was, of course, watching the two um, more $3 area. Uh, and as we popped towards 280, I got my, um, my entry. And from there on, same thing as here, we pop and behave super heavy, move down parabolic kind of to the downside. And I cover everything into the 250 area as we watched it. Um, I, I covered almost everything, um, but I wanted a piece to kind of keep for the day. And as we popped up and behaved heavy again, I added to my position, popped a bit more. So I added some more uh, back to, you know, near, you know, three fourths of my, of my size. And as we started absorbing again and curling back up, I just cut it right away because I knew like, this is not what I want to see, right? 
Uh, and after that, I kind of left it alone, was focused on the other trade. Uh, next one, uh, MIRM. <clears throat> As I was saying um, just before, this is a ticker I traded basically every single day of the run. Uh, and it actually became my, my best ticker ever uh, this week. Um, based on, you know, three days that, that behaved exactly like I wanted it, uh, you know, to work. Um, so, as I was saying, everyone's kind of watching that $30 area. Everyone's, you know, getting super long bias. But um, if you look at the bigger time frames, you're going to see, all right, first day, big volume, right? Second day, we continue up, next move up, and we see less volume. And then third day, we get parabolic. And again, no volume whatsoever, right? So the, the volume is really diminishing as the stock is moving up. That's proving to me, all right, there aren't uh, a, lot, a lot of buyers, new buyers. You know, the stock is going to behave heavy. It's an anomaly, right? So as we popped up and broke the highs, I was watching it. And I thought everyone's going to be chasing it long. Everyone's going to be looking for that next move up, right? People are expecting kind of an, an $8 move. So from 12 to 20 and on that day from 16 to 26, kind of 8 to $10 range. And now people are expecting basically 22 to 30, right? But as we got uh, parabolic towards 28, um, I was watching it because I wanted a, an entry over a whole number. As I was talking about, people are kind of, you know, getting overexcited, shorting too early. And I was watching it uh, as it popped towards 27 and 28. Uh, we slammed back down right away and I saw a seller step in uh, on, on, on the ask and I was like, all right, this just stuffed the high of day, right? This stuff basically, so everyone's chasing, everyone got their, their stop at 27, 26. It, they stop out and then sellers step in as they use the volume to basically unload their position. And as, you know, it started working out, moved down all the way back, basically rejecting the whole move back down, behaved heavy, so every time it popped, Heavy, 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 pop once more, couldn't, you know, right away, first minute, we slam back down, entered more size, slams back down, back into the range, under the range even, starts popping up, and then we're forming kind of a head and shoulder pattern, so, you know, shoulder, head, and then next shoulder before the move down, so I add even more size here, thinking, all right, if we start popping up, I'm going to cover basically for the break even on the first entries, and basically a loser on the second entries, but that allows me to get in far more, far bigger basically, right? So from there, I start moving down under the support, but we are not really seeing a lot of volume on the breakdown. We're not seeing a lot of panic like I wanted. So I cover a piece just to be sure, right? From there, I'm kind of being confident. I'm not, I'm just taking a partial, right? But if we move up and I get stopped out, at least I've got, you know, some locked in. So as we move back up, start going sideways and then sellers step in volume is increasing on the selling side on the uh, you know on, on the sales um and on, on uh, basically people unloading their long position and i'm looking at the tape looking at the tape still seeing a seller in fear and then as we get a parabolic and the volume increases i hit my hotkey and i get filled you know bottom tick on this move, really bottom tick perfect uh, and then we start popping i was looking for you know more unloading into uh, the close didn't get it and I covered everything, just my rest basically, but I didn't get filled uh, in here. Um, oh, right. Uh, next one, uh, Friday, those are the last trades for uh, this week. Three tickers. Um, I didn't post them on Twitter yet. Um, but what I was watching is basically, I was watching TCOM. Um, let's look at the daily chart, known ticker. This one I traded as well in the past here and there uh, watching it into this move uh, and you know down trending tra uh, ticker you know 180 right here same thing we never really traded there reverse stock split uh, and and you know we got a lot of back holders on this one so I was watching it um, and I believe they haven't they had a, an ATM as well uh, so we start moving up uh, pre-market 7 a.m. 8 a.m. Right around there, you know, no volume whatsoever, so I'm not attacking in here, but I'm seeing, you know, grind action. We tried breaking out and opening up over 380 towards four, and we just slammed back down, bigger selling volume as you can see right here. So as soon as I saw it pop right here, entry is there, you know, kind of double top, super heavy seller step in, we get a pop, it's super heavy, and we move back down. For those that are in the, in the Madis chat, by the way, if you don't know me, I'm a short bear. I'm a moderator in Madis Money. 
I explained this tape to you guys uh, on um, during the last webinar on Sunday. It's the heavy tape. It's, so uh, right here, it's a hidden hidden um, hidden weak tape, and there you know uh, the heavy tape. So as we start moving down, we're back under support. I'm watching for some kind of bigger pop to enter, and what I see is basically a pop towards 3:30. Um, back to you know the range testing the range I'm expecting you know, failure at that area so I get in bigger uh, and and basically risk my average which was at that time 340 ish um, start moving up all right and then on make it stuffs again the high of day so as we stuff right here the high of day right here you know we tried popping up and opening up and we stuffed right away so I'm expecting kind of the same behavior as before big move down, you know, selling, and as we, you know, get back to the support and crack it, I'm, I'm seeing the volume flow in, the panic, and I'm covering my position right in here, at least a piece, and then as, you know, I got, um, we get an, into 9 a.m., I'm expecting a bigger pop into the open, and, you know, we see a pop right away selling, I would have liked an entry, so more share, more shares, you know, more size into that um, 340 area, but we can get it. And as we flush down, uh, I covered it uh, right into 280 before seeing it, you know, all the way at 240 uh, just a few minutes later. All right, happens. It's all right. So after that, I tried getting in a long thinking, all right, now it's time for a bigger bounce. As, you know, people are chasing, people are panicking into the law of day flush. I'm thinking, all right, possible pop back towards $3, 290 And as we popped up and couldn't make it, I covered it. So I sold my long position make it a bit bigger, sold it break even, and then got back in as we kind of retested, no panic. And as, you know, we popped and got heavy again, I just, you know, sold it all and just left it alone because it was showing me that it's super heavy and I didn't want to be involved in something that would fade back. But at the same time, we filled the gap, so I didn't want to get short. It, it was too late. It's too overextended to the downside for me to really expect more movement. And, you know, got, you know, I basically closed you know, 10 cent under, you know, the morning lows. Um, nothing particular about that, you know, just grindy action, choppy uh, the whole day, as no volume was there anymore. Um, LXRX, uh, on this one, um, what I did is I was looking for long, as I told you, you know, I'm trying to get a bit better at longing those um, those tickers. Uh, why did I do that? Well, the daily chart, you know, kind of downtrending, but not as bad as the other tickers, right? This one, we're not seeing 8 million like on the other tickers. We're just seeing, you know, kind of downtrending chart. And we're also seeing, we are moving back into the range. We are trying to fill that gap towards $6. So, you know, I was watching it for, um, for, for basically continuation move towards kind of $6 to fill the gap. Uh, and that's kind of what I was looking for. Uh, for kind of a six dollar gap fill so as soon as we pop you know usually i'm looking for a short entry but on this one you know we were just up a bit we start you know moving back up finding we're seeing that that strong tape where the sellers are just getting you know uh taken away and we um are you know moving up bids absorbing so i get in long right here and typical short bear can't do anything on the long side I uh, just, you know, sold, sold it all as it got a bit parabolic and then we started really moving up, right? So same thing, I'm looking for the whole number rejection on this one, um, dilution ticker as well, um, or not, not this one wasn't a dilution ticker, I remember that, uh, because what I did is I was looking for a $6 parabolic, all right, so stops taken out, sorry to step in, you get an easy move back to the $5 range, so that's what I was looking for and that's what I got in here. So moved over six, got my entry, and then it flushed back, and I, you know, covered everything. Uh, but then I saw the selling continuing, right? We're not seeing kind of a rubber band kind of effect. We're seeing sellers step in, uh, the, the offer is absorbing, and the bids getting taken out completely. So as I saw that, I was watching for the pop to see how it reacts. We pop, sold into right away, super heavy into here. So short in more size in here, and then we get an instant 50 cent flush. I covered uh, one half in here and the rest bottom tick again as we move back to the support area. Uh, missed this move, but I'm completely fine with it just because, you know, I can't be predicting. So so if a star doesn't have a, statistic, a statistical edge, all right, so if I can't compare it to the, the history of the stocks, uh, I, you know, 
taking the trade would be just gambling because I don't know how the stock is going to behave, right? Usually these stocks don't behave this way. So if just this one does it, if it's just an anomaly, I'm completely fine with it. Um, so, but as I saw the massive selling into here and the pop, and we were, you know, under the, the, the green red line and we were still behaving really heavily, uh, really heavy and the, and the pop was on lower volume, I thought, all right, entry. But as we didn't roll over and get, I got the, the next move right away, I covered it right even as it just didn't behave like I wanted. Um, at the open, I started kind of um, scaling in on the short side, um, you know, and, and it didn't really work out. So I, I trimmed, I trimmed, I got back in. And then as we flushed back down um, towards the support area of the pre-market, I covered it as it didn't behave, you know, heavily like, like I wanted it. Uh, so kind of break evenish, I think slight green at the open, and the big trade was basically pre-market. And from there, you know, sideways action all day, so pretty happy about this one. Uh, CBIO, last sticker, uh, so this one, uh, let me show you the daily chart. This one was popping up, you know, on, uh, on Thursday, uh, I believe, yeah, Thursday, so second day on this one, I'm expecting, you know, um, kind of a rejection day, as you can see from the daily chart, we kind of you know, really reject and always fade back down. So that's what I'm looking for. And, um, you know, uh, as we, as we, um, we gap down in the morning, that proves to me, all right, we're seeing some, some heaviness, but I still wanted to see exactly to kind of let it be. I just wanted to see how it forms at first before entering a trade. So flushed hard, but kind of reclaimed, trade breaking over kind of the resistance area over uh, 780 to the, to the $8 region uh, and, and testing the uh, green red line. Could make it really hard rejection in here, but not much, much volume. I thought the volume might come on, on, under the base of the, the law of day. And we start, you know, trading and, 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 um, and consolidating just above the support area. I'm thinking so longs from yesterday are gonna start unloading, shorts are gonna get in and sellers are gonna basically take over. So I got my entry in there, instant flush back towards seven, looking for the $7 flush, kind of six, uh, 680 ish for me to cover the position uh, for an easy trade, you know, but we flushed there, supported, tried flushing again, couldn't make it. And there was like, all right, I wanted, you know, a lot of sellers to step in. I wanted panic. I wanted an instant move down. Uh, the stock was not as hard to borrow as other stocks that really faded hard. And, you know, as we popped back up and kind of supported, I thought, this is not what I signed up for. This is not the trade I'm looking for. So I'm out. All right. So protected, got out, never touched it again. And as you can see, it reclaimed all the way back up. Uh, one trade that I might have taken would be this one. So we moved back over, you know, uh, the highs. We're breaking over yesterday's highs as well. And we reject. So kind of the same thing as um, as this trade on MIRM, uh, where you know we get parabolic, we break over the highs, everyone stops out on the short side, and then sellers step in. Um, th this is kind of the same thing where we get heavy and heavy tape, sellers step in after you know everyone's out, blown out basically, up and then rejection, rejection, rejection back into the range, into the volume range, into the volume profile, into the support. And uh, yeah, that concludes this week. You know, overall, green every single day. Uh, really, really, really nice December. It's my best month ever, actually. Broke, so even broke the record from uh, November, which was my previous best month. And um, this month, same trend. I'm um, sizing up continually uh, and really, you know, using the cushion that I built and during the two last months to hit it hard during that time before the market you know, um, for the, the market possibly could shift back into a, into a you know, slower market, choppier market. So as soon as I'm seeing this action, I know statistically that those months, so January, um, I, I mean, uh, the, um, November, December, January, those are going to be the three months where I get a lot of nice action. Uh, I really want to be in and I want to you know, really take advantage of that time. So as I've got that cushion, as I know those months are usually my best month, uh, months, uh, I'm, I'm going to be sizing up and that's exactly what I did. And as you can see, it really pays off, uh, really nice opportunities overall. All right. So if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask them in the comments. Please subscribe and like the video if you liked it, of course. And if you want to learn more 
Um, join the team, everything's in the description, and uh, I'll see you in chat.